You know, in those days, the way groups started, none of us really knew any music. So if you were lucky enough to have three guys hit three different notes, the next day we bought suits and took pictures. <laughs> I remember hearing Alan Freed on the radio. He was having a rock and roll show. No one knew what that was. I took the subway to the Brooklyn Paramount. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen in my life. Everybody could sing their ass off. When you heard all of those harmonies interchanging, it was beautiful. I had never seen choreography like that in my life. I love to look out in the audience. You could feel it, people enjoying themselves. The major record companies all of a sudden had to take notice and say, what are these guys doing? Once the note comes out and you can feel the vibration of the harmony, there's nothing like it. My father trained us to sing gospel. When we got out in the street, that's when we sang doo -wop. Baby, baby, how I want you. George Goldner, he was a cat who made records, signed groups, owned the record company. How would you like to look at a gold record with your name on it and not get paid for it? When it's sold, someone says, well, how much did you make? And we go, well, we didn't really make anything. <laughs> they stopped promoting us. I still get a little, uh, when I talk about it. Next thing I know, it ain't what it was. So now I hit the bottom, lamb. It's rock and roll. It is now. And when that light comes on, like you hear that music, that's it. No matter how showtime. bad you feel, it's showtime. showtime. You guys have been together since you're teenagers. Right. And to still be together and to have made it through, it's a miracle. Never, never, never. We've carried these songs with us through the years. They live inside of us. I just enjoyed it so much that I did it for 42 years. <laughs> this is where it all started. It's the music of the unsung heroes of rock and roll.